If you take a look at some of the questions in the section on mutually exclusive events, you're going to notice that they often want you to calculate the probability of this or this occurring, the probability of this or this occurring. So we're looking at that word or, and then we're going to say, okay, if it's or, do we happen to have mutually exclusive events? Now we recall from set theory, if we have mutually exclusive events, it's two or more events that cannot occur at the same time. We can also have mutually exclusive events where we have two or more events that do not share any of the same elements. So when we go to draw this out, we're going to use disjoint sets to represent it. For example, what is the probability of drawing a heart or a diamond? There is no chance that that one card is going to be a heart and a diamond, so we have two separate circles. What is the probability of drawing a jack or a queen? These are mutually exclusive events. A card is either going to be a jack or a queen. It's not going to be both, so there is no overlap. To calculate the probability of A or B occurring, remember this is our union symbol, or, if we have mutually exclusive events, disjoint circles, we can just calculate what is the probability of event A add it to the probability of event B occurring. So remember your union symbol, that's your bowl that contains everything. If the circles are disjoint, then we just add the two probabilities together. For example, determine the probability of drawing a jack or a queen from a standard deck of cards. So as soon as you see that word or, you're going to ask yourself, is it possible for a jack to be a queen as well? And it's not, so we have disjoint or mutually exclusive events. So we're gonna say, okay, the probability of A or B, what is the probability of drawing a jack? We know or in math means addition. And then what is the probability of drawing a queen? So we can go ahead and set that up. Out of the 52 cards, four are a jack add it to the probability of drawing a queen out of the 52 cards for our queen. When we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So we do have a common denominator. We can go ahead and add those numerators and then you can also reduce this. Both the numerator and denominator are divisible by four. You can also turn it into a percentage or a decimal depending on what the question asks. So that's one way you can go about this is actually taking your formula and then substituting in each of the probabilities. If you want to draw this out, you could also say, okay, these are disjoint circles. We have four cards that are a jack. We have four cards that are a queen out of the 52 cards in our universal set. So we have a complement, which we don't really need for this calculation, but just be aware that is going to be there. So then what we could do is say, okay, or that's the bowl. So we're going to add these all together. Four plus four is eight and then over 52. So that gives us this probability, which you can then go ahead and reduce. If we have non mutually exclusive events, then we have at least one outcome in common. So we're going to draw this using intersecting circles. So for example, what is the probability of drawing a heart or a queen. Well, it is possible for a card to be both a heart as well as a queen at the same time. So if you were to go to set this up, you would say, okay, in the heart circle, we know that out of the 52 cards we have in the universal set, 13 of them are a heart. So I'm just going to put this little number here to get help myself get organized. In the queen circle, we know that four cards are a queen. Of those four queens that we have, one of them happens to be the queen of hearts. So that one card is going to go in the center here. And then because we have four queens in this entire circle, if one of them is also a heart, three of them are not going to be a heart. And then similar on the other side, so if this is my heart circle, we have 13 hearts, one of them is a queen, which means we have 12 hearts that are not a queen. So when we go to calculate this probability, or remember that's your bowl that contains everything, we can add up 12 plus 1 is 13 plus 3 is 16 out of the 52 cards in the universal set. And then we can also go ahead and reduce that. So that's one way that we can go about this using a Venn diagram. There are also formulas that we could use. So again, we're looking for that or. So in this case, probability of A or B. So we could say, what is the probability of A? Now remember, A is the entire entire circle here. So we have 13 elements within here out of 52. Add it to the probability of B, and again that's the entire circle, so we have four elements in there out of 52. And then because this one card was counted twice, it was counted for the hearts, it was also counted for the queens, each element can only be counted one time. So we're going to take off one of those because it's being counted twice currently. And then we have a common denominator, so we can just add the numerators, 13 plus 4 is 17, take off the one that was counted twice, and we end up with that same probability 
16 out of 52. Or we could also say now in set theory, we said what is the probability of A but not B or A only? So that would be this piece here that would be 12 and again out of 52 elements altogether. And then what is in set theory we went B but not A. So that would be just this piece not including the one that's common to both. So then we would add that to the 3 out of 52 and then we would also now add the middle because we're just taking this piece plus this piece we also need to include this one. So 1 out of 52 so that's what is A and B. We know A and B is that centerpiece and then 12 plus 3 is 15 plus 1 again that's going to give us the 16 out of 52. So when dealing with set theory you can think about it A but not B. When we're dealing with probabilities we actually refer to this as what is the probability of A given that B has already occurred or what is the probability of B given that A has already occurred. Remember also that we would have a complement of 36 cards. Altogether, the probability of the universal set has to add up to one. If we get a total more than one, it means that we do have non-mutually exclusive events. There is some overlap, and that overlap is the difference that puts you over that one. When dealing with mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive events, most people find that actually drawing out the Venn diagram is more helpful than trying to use the formulas. So I would highly recommend drawing that Venn diagram first. It works if you have this or this and you're trying to determine the probability. Similar to set theory, make sure you start with the middle section first if possible and don't forget about the complement as well. And remember that the probability of the entire universal set cannot go over one. So in our first example, we're going to determine the probability of drawing an 8 or a black card from a standard deck. So the first thing you're going to do is say, okay, or. That means I'm going to be dealing with either mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive. Is it possible for a card to be both 8 and black at the same time when I draw it? And yes, we have a black 8 of spades and we have a black 8 of clubs. So I'm going to go ahead and draw intersecting circles and then I know that I'm going to put those two cards cards that could potentially be in either circle in the middle. So if I know that there are four eight cards, two of them are black, which means two of them are not black. That would be the eight of diamonds and the eight of hearts. And I also know that if I have 26 black cards, two of them are an eight, which means 24 of them are not an eight. And that's out of 52 cards in our standard deck. So that means that my complement is going to be 24 cards. So if we add this up, 24 plus 24 is 48. 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. So we have all 52 cards represented in our diagram. I can now just go probability of eight or black. That's the bowl that contains everything. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 24 is 28 out of the 52 cards in the universal set. And that's all you have to do. Now, if you wanted to go back to the formulas, you could say, okay, I'm just going to pick one of them, but we can say, what is the probability of drawing an 8? So altogether, we can see that in the 8 circle, there are 4 out of 52 cards that are an 8. The probability of drawing a black card, we can see that in the black circle, we have 26 cards out of 52 that are black. Remove the one that was counted twice, so take that off, and then again, 4 plus 26 is 30, minus 2 is 28, the denominator stays the same. And then you can go ahead and reduce this, but you don't necessarily have to use the formulas. If it's mutually exclusive, non-mutually exclusive, draw out your Venn diagram, and we can go from that diagram right into our final answer. And in our final example here, we're told that a recent survey of high school students reported that 52% don't drink coffee. Okay, so that's important. So 52% do not drink coffee, which means 48% of them do drink coffee. 21% don't drink pop, 100 minus 21, that means that 79% do drink pop, while 36% drink both. Now, I don't even know what the question is yet, but I know that if they drink both, that means I'm going to have intersecting circles, we're going to have non-mutually exclusive events. So we can go ahead and set up our Venn diagram, and then we have to be really careful here. Because they gave us the number who does not drink coffee, we know that 48% does drink coffee. Coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this really tiny outside there. If 21% does not drink pop, 79% does drink pop. And I can go ahead right off the bat and fill in my 36% that drink both because I want to start in the center if possible. And the probability of our universal set 
is going to come out to be 100%. So I can put that in the bottom there. Now, when I go to figure out what is going to go in here, I can see, okay, if there's 48% in that coffee circle, I already have 36% in there. So 48% minus 36%, that means 12% will drink only coffee. And then similar with pop, if there are 79% of the people within that entire circle, 36% are already in there, which means we have 43% that drink only pop. And add this up, 12 plus 36 plus 43 does not add to 100, we're missing the complement. So we know that 9% has to go in the complement. Now we have a total of 100%. And I suppose I can even go ahead and draw the percent signs in there. So before I even start, I'm going to try to get an idea as to what's happening. Then I'm going to take a look at the questions. Question one, what is the probability that a randomly selected student drinks at least one? So at least one is coffee only or pop only or both. So at least one, that's your bowl that contains everything. If we add those up, 91% is our total. The next question wants to know what is the probability that a randomly selected student drinks neither coffee nor pop? That is the complement. So if we know that there's 100% in the universal set, if we subtract coffee only or both or pop only, which is the number that we just calculated there, 9% is the difference. And then what is the probability that that randomly selected student will drink coffee but not pop? So that would be coffee only, which is 12% right here. But again, remember, that word determine that means we have to show how we got this so if we start by adding up all of the students who drink coffee plus all of the students who drink pop that will come out to 127 percent if we know that in this we have to have 91% because we take off that complement. The difference between those is the overlap. That's what's going to go in here, that 36%. So now we can say if there's 48% of the students who drink coffee, 36 of them also drink pop. The difference is the number of students or the percent of students who would drink coffee only.